Hi, good morning everyone. Let's get started with the next topic for this training session which is on SAP system architecture. Okay, in this topic we will be talking about the Java landscape, the ABAP landscape and different components within it. Okay, so let's get started. SAP system. SAP systems are used for mapping business processes or business applications. These applications should be implemented independent of the hardware environment used that is operating system database to the greatest extent possible. So this is one key thing to note that is say for example you have a Windows environment, you have say Linux environment or you have your uh, say Unix environment running on IBM uh, then you may have your environment running on Sun Solaris. So basically the SAP perspective, it doesn't change. People who are managing this environment for them, there is not much difference in terms of managing them. Once you go to the SAP SAPGU interface, there is extremely less difference between them. Okay, but when you come at the database level, when you start using the DB tools or the OS tool, that is where there is little bit difference, but that is all to do with the operating system maintenance and the database maintenance. Okay, to do, basically SAP NetWeaver provides two different runtime environment. That first is the ABAP runtime environment. Basically, we call it as a usage type AS ABAP. You have Java runtime environment. We call that as AS type, usage type basically AS Java. ABAP, what this ABAP stand for? ABAP basically it's a advanced business application programming and is a programming la language developed by SAP. So more, all the development on the application server ABAP happens using this language. Okay, let's go to the next slide which is on client and server definition. Here you can see this is the first figure which shows it's a hardware oriented view where you have a client which is trying to connect to a server over a van or over a LAN. Okay, then the other one is a software oriented view where you have a client which is basically process one which is trying to uh, send a request of service to server which is a process 2 and server in turn provisions the service back to the client. Okay, so this is the software oriented view for you. Uh, the next thing is on the, uh, so we have seen hardware oriented view, we have seen the software oriented view. So let's go to the next slide which is talking about the different processes which are involved. Okay, the following processes are often used for operating business application software. So at the top you are seeing a presentation process. Okay, beneath that you have an internet layer which could be your say tools like ICM or web dispatchers. Uh, then you have below that is the application process which is where your SAP, the business logic runs. Okay, and Below that is the database process which are running. So in single tier, what happens that all these processes, whatever you are seeing on this figure, they are running on one single system. Okay, two tier, basically you have a presentation layer separate and rest of the things runs on one sin single system. Three tier, basically all the three things runs on different system. Okay, so that is about the different tiers within uh, this particular SAP software. Okay, now instance. It's one key concept. Just take note of it. Instance is an administrative unit that combines SAP system components providing one or more services. The services provided by an instance are started and stopped together as a unit. <laughs> instance profile to set parameters of all the components of an instance. Each instance has its own buffer area and an instance runs on a physical computer but there can be multiple instances on one computer. An instance is identified by the system ID and the instance number. So the term instance and application server are often used synony synonymously. 
so basically instance what you get in instance is say for example you have a sap system and you want services like dialog work process to run your uh, to handle your users activity you require background work process to do the background processing you require spool process for doing the uh, printing work say so for all this you can decide whether to put it in same box or put it to differentiate to put it in different box and see this this way you can differentiate or you can segregate the traffic which is coming from the uh, dialog users from the batch users so that is the way you can organize your application servers or instances now instances of an SAP system here you can see one example is here where there is a PC which has a SAP GUI installed it's uh, one of the client tool which need to be installed and you have a web browser so SAP GUI is mainly for accessing the uh, the ABAP application servers web GUI is for the Java application servers okay then middle you can see there are uh, you have your ABAP and Java instances okay you have a central instance central services instance then you have a dialog instance so computer B is running just one dialog instance C is running one dialog instance only but computer A has central instance as well as central services instance okay and computer D is running only database so this is how you can uh, separate your different layers for providing different services so central instance of an SAP system for the AS ABAP they are, these are the message server and the NQ work process which is mandatory for the AS Java you can recognize the central instance by the SDM process central services instance it provides central services of the AS Java the message service and the NQ service for the AS ABAP, these services are more to ABAP central services instance for high availability reasons. So these AS ABAP systems therefore no longer have a central instance. All other instances of the systems are typically called dialog instance. If the central instance and the database and for the AS ABAP Java also the central services instances are installed on the same computer. So we just saw this particular figure where it's shows which instances we can put on one system which we can put on different systems how we can segregate or how we can do a distributed uh, architecture where things can be distributed in different systems for the scalability perspective for the performance perspective for high availability perspective okay now processes for sap netweaver application server okay on the extreme left side you are seeing a message server at the center you are seeing a gateway then on the extreme right side there is a ICM process which is an internet communication manager so in the message server you are seeing how it is sending the request to the dispatcher below there is a dispatcher a web dispatcher where you have dialogue work process for handling the user's request below that you uh, side by the side you have a background process you have lock management using the NQ work process so these are basically the different process within SAP NetWeaver system okay let's go to the next one to see this process in detail basically the dispatcher distributes the request to the work processes okay so I'm just giving an overview of this picture over here so dispatch the request to the work processes dialog work processes fulfill all requests for the execution of dialog steps triggered by an active user every dispatcher requires at least two work process so just take note that we need to have at least two work process then spool work processes basically they pass sequential data flows to the printers at least one spool process we should have it is possible to configure more than one spool process for each dispatcher then update work process basically it executes update request you need at least one update work process per system and you can configure more than one per dispatcher so background work process basically for executing 
the programs that run without interacting with the user and you need at least two background work process for each SAP system. Next is the NQ work process. Basically, it administers the lock in the shared memory. The lock table contains the logical database locks of the ABAP runtime enrollment of the SAP system. Only one NQ work process is needed for each system. Okay, here you can see how you will be seeing this particular process in the processes table in SM50 transaction. So when you type SM50 transaction, you will see things like DIA for the dialog request and the ABAP parameter, the profile parameter for it is, you can see in the table, the profile parameter name is listed there. So if you want to make changes, you need to just change these values. Basically, say for example, you have five dialog work process. So the value of this first parameter that is RDISP slash WP that is work process underscore NO means number underscore dia stand for the dialog request. So this number will be equal to five. So that is how you can update the profile. Same thing goes for the update process, which is seen as UPD. And there is one more called UPD2. Okay, so UPD2 is mainly for the non-critical activities. Okay, then for the background, you will see BGD, first pool, you will see SPO and NQ is ENQ. Okay, so next is on the services side. Okay, services, we saw the message server. Basically, it handles the communication between the distributed dispatcher within the AS ABAP, thereby enabling scalability of several parallel application servers. Message server is configured only once per system. Okay, then gateway. Gateway basically enables the communication between SAP systems or between SAP systems and external application systems. There is one per dispatcher. Okay, then ICM basically it stands for Internet Communication Manager and it enables the communication with the SAP system using web protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, SMTP. Okay, so the ICM receives requests from the client and forwards them to the SAP system for processing. Okay, now let's get into the Java process. Okay, you have a message server. This is your Java message service. You have a NQ service. Okay, then you have SDM that is the SAP software deployment manager. Then you have a Java dispatcher which is distributing the request between the two and at the bottom you can see that server processes S. Okay, now the following processes exist in SAP Java. So first one is we just saw its dispatcher which distributes incoming requests to the server processes. Then server processes execute the Java application. Every server process is multi-threaded and can thus process a large number of requests in parallel. Okay, the Java message service manages a list of Java dispatcher and server process. It is responsible for the communication within the Java runtime environment. Okay, then NQ process, we just saw it is for managing the locks. These are the database locks. Okay, SDM is basically stand for software deployment manager and it is actually a standard tool used to install Java components on the SAP Web AS Java. Okay, types of SAP NetWeaver AS. So we have AS ABAP system, AS Java system, and a dual stack system where you have both ABAP and Java stack. Now SAP has gone away with the dual stack uh, methodology. Only solution manager and PI is at the moment dual stack. And PI also you have a dual stack version and you have a only java version as well so it's slowly getting away from dual stack strategy for pi as well only solution manager is remaining dual stack for now okay then we have as abap system in the as abap system we have seen uh, basically it's in the figure you can see there are three layers okay so the first layer is basically the central instance then you have central services instance and then finally you have dialogue instances 
okay so that is about the types of sap as netweaver now let's see the architecture okay here you can see that the message server provides the as app with a central message service for internal communication okay the message server also provide information on which instances of the systems are currently available okay the app dispatches of the individual application servers communicate via uh, this particular message server when you log on to the app using sap gui for windows what happens is sap gui for java using logon groups the message server performs a load distribution of users so the moment you are trying to access from sap gui which is a client tool need to be installed in each user pc so from that when you are trying to access you get connected to the message server message server in turns evaluate and sends it to the dispatcher and dispatcher in turn will assign you a respective work process so depending on the work that you want to do you want to do say dialog work you want to do an update you want to do a background processing or you want to do a printing accordingly the respective work process will be installed to you okay then on the right side you are seeing the same thing but it's a dialog instance so it has all the same process but you won't have a message server there okay so rest all is the same so that is the difference you have just one message server and one in queue server in your environment and they are the one who centrally manages the activities okay now let's see the java architecture okay in the java architecture here what you are seeing is you have a sdm which is running there at the bottom okay so this is the you have the sdm software deployment manager then let's go back central services message service and nq servers runs in central instance okay so let's see this here you can see that you have a central services instance you have a central instance okay and dialog instance is having just the java dispatcher so this is how the, it's distributed okay one thing to take note here is that the entirety of the java environment all processes and the database scheme we call it as a java cluster so it's not a cluster that you have ha or something like that but all the components as a whole we call them as a cluster okay now here it's an example of a dual stack architecture where you have both this is your app side this is your java side which both are sitting in the same system okay the changes which is introduced from sap netweaver application server 7.1 onwards till now is basically they have renamed the central instance to primary application server so central instance no more called primary uh, central instance but it is called as primary application server dialog instance is called an additional application server and java dispatcher was replaced by the idm icm process okay the sdm process was discontinued there is no more sdm and java central service instance comprises a gateway process so take note of this terminology because this is a new terminology and people who are used to managing sap environment they still call central instance they still call dialog instance they still call sdm so these three are the core terminologies which is which will be used for for long till you guys get used to the new naming convention for say primary application server is for central instance additional application server is for dialog instance Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular training session. Thank you for joining and have a nice day. Bye-bye.